the presence of God is different from the experience of the Spirit of God and from the life of God. Somebody can be born again, somebody can be filled with the Holy Spirit, but not experience the presence of God. Amen. Amen. People can fake miracles, people can fake prophecy, people can fake a lot of things, but you cannot. It is impossible to fake the presence of God. Impossicant. Impossible and cannot at the same time. Impossicant. You cannot. Mm -hmm. You cannot fake that. I gave an example with Lucifer being an anointed cherubim. Cast out of the presence of God. Cast out of the mountain of God. Cast out of heaven. Still anointed but void of the presence of God. I gave an example that the Lord Jesus was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness. This is in Luke chapter number 4. And when he comes back from the wilderness, he's no longer led. He's moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I want somebody to share this because the mark of a true believer, the mark of God on a believer is not the anointing, is not the giftings, because you can be a true believer without all of these things. But the mark of God on a believer is the presence of God. You cannot fake the presence of God. I was explaining something. Listen to me, everybody, even the sons that are here. I want you to pay attention to this. The presence of God is connected to a place in the realm of the spirit called the throne room. Mm -hmm. Somebody who walks with the presence of God is somebody who his spirit is not just in heaven, is not just on the mountain of God, but is in the throne room of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think people heard what I'm saying. Somebody who walks with the presence of God is somebody who their spirit man is not on the mountain of God, Mm -hmm. is not in heaven, but is in the throne room of God himself. Wow. Wow. Is the throne room of God himself. You know, do you know why the Ark of the Covenant was powerful? Do you understand what the Ark of the Covenant was? The Ark of the Covenant was the earthly throne of God. The Ark of the Covenant was the earthly mercy seat of God. What made the Ark powerful was not the Ten Commandments that were inside. Was not the staff of Moses. Was not the manna that was inside. No, 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 no. What made it powerful is the covering of those things. The two cherubims that were on top of the throne represented the mercy seat of God. When the Lord spoke to Moses, he told him, I will speak to you between the cherubims on the mercy seat. This is why when two anointed prophets, one was a priestly prophet, one was a born prophet, the sister of Moses and the older brother Aaron were talking about Moses. God descended and told them, listen, if they be prophets among you, I will make myself known unto them in visions and in dreams. I will speak to them in dark speeches. But my servant Moses, I speak to him face to face, mouth to mouth. Moses was a man that walked with the presence of God. Was a man who was walking in the throne room of God whilst being on earth. Yeah. Go back to Psalms 139. I want people to catch this. This is going to change somebody's life. Uh-huh. Read, read, son. Read, read, read. Psalm 139. Mm-hmm. We started from verse 7. Mm-hmm. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Mm-hmm. Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Notice the presence of God and the spirit of God are being separated. Mm-hmm. 
Listen to me, children of God. They are not the same thing. They are both God, but they are different experiences of God. You need the Spirit of God. No doubt about it. That's why God gave him to us. But how are the prophets of old moving <laughs> without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. How did they manifest more than you? <laughs> You're not listening to me. We are under a better covenant. We are under a better situation. But the people in the Old Testament somehow did more than us. And we are supposed to do more than them. How is that possible? The presence of God. When somebody walks with the presence of God, God does not only work with you. God does things independent of you when you are in a place. Yeah. Be somebody that when you enter a place, the whole building shakes. Amen. Amen. Demonic foundations shake because it's not just Latoya that went into a place. It's not just Reuel is in a place. It's not just Jels is in a place. It is God himself mm-hmm. that now is beginning to do things independent of you. Amen. You see, when Jesus rebuked the storm, he did not rebuke the storm because he was anointed. Who can speak and tell the waters where to stop? If it's not God, the Bible literally said there, God said, spoke to the waves, how far their waves, the proud waves can go. See, stop here, and this is how far your proud waves will go. God spoke that. Jesus spoke to the storm. His disciples looked at each other. They said, what manner of man is this? What manner of man is this? Listen to me. The presence of God separates boys to men. Everybody can grab a Bible and say Jesus is Lord and it is good. Everybody can do that and it's good. But not everybody can display the presence of God. The power that is produced by the presence of God is different from the power produced by the anointing. That's good. The power produced by the presence of God is different from the power produced by the anointing. Somebody with the anointing can fall. Somebody with the presence of God can never fall. (laughs) It is the absolute difference. It is the absolute and total difference. It is the absolute and total difference. I, I, I don't know if you can hear me. So a lot of people don't understand what made Moses extremely powerful. Remember, Moses was not anointed. Moses walked with the presence of God. God told him, I have come down. I have heard the cry of my people. I have heard their suffering. I have seen their suffering and I know their sorrow by reason of their taskmasters. And I have come down to deliver them. Moses, go deliver them. So it was not Moses that was going. It was the presence of God that was going into Egypt with Moses. I don't know if somebody is catching me. We're catching. I don't know if somebody is catching me. So it was no longer Moses going into Egypt. Yeah. 
it was, Mo it was not Moses going into Egypt. There are certain things that the anointing can do, powerful and mighty things. The Bible says when Joshua prayed, there is no day that God ever answered a man in the way he answered Joshua. Why? Because when Joshua spoke, he spoke in the presence of God. You know what makes a prophet a powerful prophet? It's not the fact that they can prophesy. Because the prophetic gift can be given to somebody who is not even a prophet. There are people who prophesy off a gifting, not because they are prophets. The right. duty of a prophet, the purpose of a prophet is one that stands in the presence of God. That is who a prophet is. A prophet is not just somebody that comes and tells you, that says the Lord. Yes, that is part of the job description. But where is that says the Lord coming from? You see, Samuel could declare something and it never fail. No word of Samuel ever fell because Samuel spoke from the throne room of God. It was God himself speaking without authorizing Samuel, but because he's in the throne room of God, because he's seated next to Christ Jesus, because he's seated in a lifted position, no matter what he says, came to pass. Amen. Amen. The anointing cannot do that. The anointing can fail. Uh, look, the anointing can fail. The anointing can fail. You see, the anointing requires people to cooperate. The anointing requires people to cooperate. If people don't believe, the anointing can be limited. There are people who can block the anointing from flowing. Listen to me, these are real things I'm telling you. Mm 